it's I'm talking about rubbish. Mm -hmm. As I said, no change there then. <laughs> now, what what I was interested in, uh, uh, as I say, I, I was trying to find out more about where Manchester's rubbish goes from, from a friend of my sons who came around here with his kids when their kids were here too. And he works for a company that works for the city council in terms of rubbish. And they're saying, well, what go, what happens to it? He says, oh, most, most of it just gets, um, just goes, regardless of which bin you put it in, just goes to um, landfill or something like that. I thought, what? That can't be true. Because this is a story you get if you go to recycling in Greater Manchester. Every single plastic bottle, every glass jar and every piece of paper you recycle in your bins at home is recycled into something new. Every blade of grass, it's quite poetic, isn't it? They must have had a, an, an Englit graduate do this. Um, every blade of grass, every eggshell and tea bag you recycle is made into compost. Even some of the things that you can't recycle are turned into something that we use every day. Yes, it's electricity. Find out how. So that's, that's the kind of story that they give us. And that I give the reference to it. And th these, these are the sort of things, I, I know it varies from different parts of Greater Manchester to, 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 to others, but in Manchester, you've got, you've got the blue bin, um, which can either be a small, relatively small one or a huge one. And basically that's for, the, for these things, juice boxes, drink cartons, bus or train tickets. I wonder why they put catalogues. Who gets catalogues anymore? Pizza boxes, cardboard, egg boxes, cardboard, newspapers. Fairly straightforward, at least, that one. Um, what goes in your brown bin? The only plastics we can recycle are bottle-shaped, interestingly. Mm -hmm. So this is the, this, this they call them the mixed bin, the brown bin. And you can use foil and foil trays and empty aerosols, drinks cans, but you can't do any other plastic other than plastic bottles. I'll come back onto this. Uh, it, it all comes on a card disc, I split it into two because you couldn't see it very clearly. Then there's a the green bin, which um, basically is, is any old is food plus twigs and branches and grass cuttings, tea bags, cut flowers, which is not been going for that long, the green bin, but it, I think it's quite it's quite a good one to have that if you can't, you haven't got a compost bin of your own or you can't and some of the things you can't compost anyway. And then some of the things you can't recycle, plastic film, yogurt pots, food trays, plastic bags, clothes shoes, plastic toys, bin bags, electrical items, plant pots, plant pots. That surprises me. Why do they make don't make plant pots out of recyclable things anyway? Bottle tops. You have to take the tops off any bottle that you have because you can recycle that. Polystyrene, coffee cups, and nappies. So that's good news, isn't it? And um, so various surveys have been done. Nine out of ten people in Greater Manchester are putting one or more wrong items in their mixed recycling bin. Oh dear. <laughs> Not only that, but some people do it deliberately because oh. because their main grey bin that includes uh, everything else is um too full and you're not allowed a big grey bin unless you've got young kids in the in the family and for the nappies and so on um so that so i'll come back onto that one as well as i said the only type of plastic that can currently be recycled is great is plastic bottles and we, the local authorities collect about 1.2 million tons of waste in Greater Manchester per annum. And this is this looks like a, in the face of it, like a good statistic. The amount of waste sent to landfill has dropped from 28% to 10% in three years. I haven't got the, 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 the most up to date figures. That sounds good. But recycling rates have flatlined in recent years around about 45%. Now, I, I looked at um, a Friends of the Earth web page about this, and I don't know if any uh, Friends of the Earth, I, I always thought in the you know, 70s and 80s was doing a really good job. In fact, it taught me how to recycle A4 envel uh, envelopes into little folders by just cutting off the edge of it, and I've done that ever since. So I always thank them for reminding me to do that rather than buying a plastic folder or anything. 
but they, this this is their image oh, this is what they say is um they they they've got on um for disposable waste disposable for communities whilst generating clean renewable energy and th and this apparently has been one of the adverts from Covantra. i don't know who it was and he's they're basically saying that's a load of tosh um then th and the, the friends of the earth they seem to have disappeared for the last few years if you go look at their website it's incredibly out of date we had this very um long video about turning waste into energy and this is the kind of summary of it i don't want to to go into it in too much detail because i, can't, I didn't really understand it all um but it, it's basically they're they're, com they're they're combusting it they're really it releases heat for energy you get co2 carbon dioxide emissions come from the carbon content and the um plastic is a fossil fuel and it's it's carbon dioxide is called fossil carbon dioxide but one ton of mixed waste produces one ton of carbon dioxide and um, some partially renewable they call it energy one ton of dense plastic results in two tons of carbon dioxide and a little bit of renewable energy as well so their view of it isn't isn't as impressed and this is from a, a survey they did of local authorities or oh, this is more recent one from two, it goes up to 2021 this is the local authority collected waste <laughs> known by the acronym uh, LACW sent for incineration in England and it's risen from 9% to 48.2% in 2021 so what's happened is they've moved from landfill to incineration so what about incineration um this is a a chart showing the amount of plastic that it's estimated is going to be um uh produced is business as usual in 20, 2040 and it, you can see they the, they're expect and these are the un, the anticipated ways that they can get rid of it substituting recycling disposing which includes um, um, incineration and mismanaged that is the open burning terrestrial pollution and ocean pollution so they're hoping to do something about it if you see this kind of approach anyway we will see Plastic production is expected to double in the next 20 years. Uh, recycling rates, 30% in Europe, 9% in the America and zero in much of the developing world. The cum cumulative amount of plastic in the oceans by 2040 estimated at 600 million tonnes, equivalent in weight to more than 3 million blue whales, which is alarming. So what about waste to energy? That, that's what they like to call incineration. It reminds me a bit. Do you remember with um, um, Sellafield? It used to be called what we used to be called wind, wind scale, didn't it? Wind scale. Wind scale. Yep. Yeah. And the the reason that they changed that was because they had the huge accident at wind scale. So one way to get rid of that is to change its name. So oh. into something else. <laughs> so, so rather than calling them incineration plants, they call them waste to energy units um with and we're, we're in in line with the eu which burns almost 42 percent of its waste and we feel very good about it but any approach to converting plastic waste into energy does nothing to reduce demand for new plastic pro products and even less to mitigate climate change and that's from a national geographic article on it so is incineration a good idea well first of all there are there are two in the Manchester area, I think um, there's is it one in Eccles and there's one somewhere somewhere else with Windshore Way something like that, um, but citing waste to waste to energy plants like landfills is difficult. No one wants to live near a plant that may host hundreds of trash filled lorries a day, and usually the plants end up near low income communities. No surprise there. They're expensive to build and operate. They run most efficiently with steady streams of waste. So if there isn't enough waste to burn, they've got to import it and burn it or you know, keep generating it to keep it going. 
Recycling plastic waste saves far more energy by reducing the need to extract fossil fuel and process it into new plastic than burning it can generate. And also, incinerators can emit low levels of toxic pollutants such as dioxins, acid gases and heavy metals, as well, of course, as carbon dioxide. So, um, recycling rates in Greater Manchester have been falling. This is from an article in the Manchester Evening News. Let me just remove this over here. Why? why? What, during COVID, um, there was there's contamination, there's fewer bin collections, and now the Chinese have banned importing plastic waste, and that's all contributed to re recycling rates falling. Less than half was, was recycled, 47.8%, between April and June 2020, down from 52.9% during the same period a year before. And the amount of recycling rejected in the region has increased 20-fold. People are giving up and just chucking anything in the bins, in any bin that will hold it, as long, you know, as long as you can hide it in the, say, the blue bin by putting a bit of cardboard on top of it, because they know nothing will happen. There's no problem with doing it. And um, over two and a half thousand tons of rubbish from recycling bins was rejected over the three month period because it was contaminated by non recyclable waste, such as things like face masks, which aren't recyclable. If you didn't know. And why can we only recycle plastic bottles? Well, you know, in the bins. Uh, plastic bottles are made mainly of, of HDPE and PET, PET. Plastic pots, tubs, trays, and all the rest are made of a range of different types of plastic which are harder to recycle or more, e they're not economically viable to recycle. Other, other local authorities do though. And the Greater Manchester only collects plastic bottles because there's a sustainable market for them. Um, so what happens to the plastic I put in my general waste bin? That is the stuff you can't recycle. It's delivered to a mechanical treatment and reception facility, which shreds and compacts it. These are then delivered by rail to the energy recovery facility, mainly at Runcorn, to be made into electricity. That is, the plastic is incinerated. Call it energy recovery, it's incineration. Do they end up, does it end up in other countries? 62% of the plastic bottles you recycle were sold to reprocessors in the UK, 38% those in the EU. Depends on market prices and the quality of the recycling. Oh, they're very, very pleased with themselves, uh, Greater Manchester. They've opened three new Renew shops. Has anybody gone onto the Renew shop website to see what's available? No. It's a, t it's, it's a tiny number of things, considering that they've got them going, but they're, they're trying... And this isn't a bad idea. People should be trying to recycle this stuff that they've got. And you can do that by dropping them off at recycling centers. But going to recycling centers, for a lot of people, it's very difficult to do. It's not easy, is it? It's not straightforward. Anyway, so they've got- but Surely, surely, you know, people like Age Concern and Bernardo's and Emmaus and stuff have been doing this for years. What's so- we were about reuse shops. Well, I suppose the difference is that the, these are people who have not taken them to um, to uh, age concern or whatever, but just dropped them off at the. Um, if you if you go now to drop off your rubbish, there are several different places in it. If you've got yeah. old electrical stuff, you put it one place. If you've got old furniture, you put it another place. So they are attempting to do more of that on at the site right. of the. So right. I think that's why. Now. This is something you should be aware of. There are recycling officers and they go around and now and then they do inspections. And if you don't do it right, you can get into trouble. Um, I, don't, I don't exactly know what happens once you've been tagged. Does it mean that forever you're, you're doomed to having to take your stuff by car or whatever, <laughs> the recycling center? I don't know, but it's... Um, I think it means they won't empty that bin on that day. Ever? Or just on that one? Oh, I don't know. I got one once from Trafford, and it says, your bin has been corrupted. Um, <laughs> I presume meant you put the wrong thing in the bin. You know. <laughs> so they, that day, they didn't take the bin away. 
So I put it out the next week and they took it. So I don't know. It's kind of... Uh... Had you taken any stuff out in the interim? Yeah, they, 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 did, they did say there was something in it that shouldn't... So it was, you know, near the top. So I, don't, I don't actually fiddle about with the pin and put things on the bottom. But um, <laughs> I, I can't remember what it was. But, you know, sometimes it absent-minded you put something in the wrong bin and it was, it was obvious. So they, uh... yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but that's only happened once. Um, and, and another thing is this, this thing about... Plus, they only take bottles. It's very confusing when you you buy you unwrap something from the supermarket and it tells you on the thing that the film isn't recyclable, but the you know the the case or the bin, the bag that it comes in, it is. So you stick it in the plastic bin, and now you find out that it's not allowed. You know, no, no, you can't. You might. What they're saying is, it might be recyclable at places which can recycle this, which might be one or two authorities in the whole of the UK, for as far as you know. Yeah. They, they put it. They don't. It, it, it says widely any... recycled, but I mean, I don't. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From John O'Groats to Land's End. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but surely, I mean, we've we've got lives to be getting on with. We can't be sorting through our rubbish bins all day. You know, it's their job. Get on with it. Have you got recycling bins where you live? Well, we we do, but the problem is um, they're old mostly terraces and there's no room at the back of the houses to put four or five bins for each each house. So we can only fit two bins behind our house. So we've got to take most of our stuff into Sainsbury's or somewhere. We can't. Ah, right, right. Yeah, that, yeah that's a, it's a very important problem, that, isn't it? What do yeah. people in flats do as well? I don't know. What do they do in these high rise flats? Have they they don't lower it down by chain? Don't they have communal bins? Some of them they have like a that, massive... that's, they, that's they do where like they shoot you. Can, that that's true. Now there are things that are happening. Like there's the something that just seems fairly straightforward to me that um, is recycling cans and bottles which in it from next year scotland will have the first deposit return scheme in the uk any shop or cafe selling these drinks will be legally obliged to have a return point now this has been going on in germany for over 20 years and 98 percent of plastic wow. cups and glass bottles are returned you kind of expect the germans to be a bit like that though don't you <laughs> Am I stereotyping them or something? But yes. I, I I <laughs> just, just a bit. <laughs> well, they're living up to it though, aren't they? With that, that's yeah. pretty impressive. But an imp impressive one. I'm not. I'm not um, slagging them off. I'm impressed by it. Oh no, but their streets. Are, their streets are cleaner anyway. I mean, I, I suppose it's probably a national characteristic, isn't it? But they have yeah. more yeah. pride in it. They do. They do. They do. Um, I mean, and we've got, I think we've got better in some ways. Things like dog dirt on the pavement. At one time, people just let the dogs roam everywhere, didn't they? Just do it. And you're forever stepping in dog poo. Now it's much better than people have got little plastic bags that they can hang on to trees. In I'm going to say they hang them on trees. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where, 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 where do they get that idea from? It's a really bizarre one, that, isn't it? Anyway, how do we compare to uh, other countries? Um, well, recycling for forty-four percent. I'm not exactly. That's what they claim. Best performing. Now, this is not a surprise. Germany, which recycled two thirds of its entire waste, and we're, we come at a creditable sixteenth in terms of world recycling rates. But incredibly, Wales by itself is third, behind only Singapore and Germany. Who would have thought that? And it's because of their towards zero waste policy from two thousand and ten. So well done, Wales. Yeah. Um, there's a league table of English local authorities out of 351 local authorities Manchester City Council came 298 <laughs> but Trafford came 8th yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how do they work that out because Greater Manchester is always kind of combined in ways I thought but there you go uh, I thought you'd like that one uh, that <laughs> Great. but I thought I'd just um share that with you it was my little I, I i the more i got into it the more complicated it gets i mean recycling plastics is not straightforward because if you think about it if you've got a plastic one a, a plant that's recycling it's really expensive to run you want more and more plastic to come in so it's not really encouraging people to to um not use as much 
but uh, I, I find it all very frustrating and I think we're we're all a bit doomed by it like everything else oh by the way Gordon um, Rochdale in 2014 had the worst record of any local authority on recycling I don't know how it's done more recently do you, is it, do you think it's particularly really? bad? Well, I'm just I'm a bit <laughs> You're doing the walk of shame, Bert. I can say I can't tell anything <laughs> negative about Rochdale. Bert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just completely ignore that comment. I mean, that's the best way I'm dealing with it. <laughs> there you go. We do, you know, we go to the local. Uh, Science centre here, and it looks really efficient. There's umpteen different bins to put stuff in, you know, and it um, it seems to work. Um, plastic are what nobody can cope with, can they? Why have we got? So why do we produce so much plastic? Why are vegetables wrapped in a plastic bag that tells me it's a cauliflower? It's a big one. <laughs> It's belief, really. Why do cucumbers come wrapped in film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and one and film which is really difficult to get off as well. Sometimes yes. <laughs> they use a knife and you're cutting into the cucumber yeah. and trying to get it. Off. You have to get your special little kitchen knife, don't you? That's got yeah. They're easy in. Pull it off. Pull it. Yeah. Hope it gets comes out. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is you have to wash the recycle the plastic food stuff, don't you, before you put it in the bin. You? You're asked to wash it before you put it in the bin. Well, I yeah. used to do that to stop it smelling, but I don't know whether that was a requirement. Yeah, but it's a resource, isn't it? It's using a resource to clean it all up. So why do we bother with plastic so much in the first place? I agree, Gordon. Yeah, but we do. Everything comes in plastic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, we it's, actually have a proper milkman who delivers in glass bottles and takes them away again and they get reused. Yeah, yeah we do as well. Yeah, that, yeah. Good. I, don't, I think the, the paying a deposit is quite a good idea, especially on bottles and things, because you know that I used to have a roaring trade in taking bottles back <laughs> and beer off when I was a kid. You know, you get a penny a bottle and if you collected them off, you could get, you know. Uh, and it was all constant recycling is it my imagination but when we were young we we, we got deliveries of um pop pop yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. What, was it, what was it called corona corona, corona that's right yeah. a little um flip flipping what do they call those sort of ones that you stop uh, things yeah, stop yeah. things yeah. that are on a bit uh, of metal to stop it going away it it beggars belief as to why all the councils cannot be uniform so that that confusion over what you put in where it, it becomes becomes a, a normal process for all yeah. of us it's not even unified across greater manchester is it no. 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 I mean, no. <laughs> what, what did they used to do before plastic i mean i can remember taking a bowl to the fish and chip shop to get mm. um fish and chips and mushy peas in a bowl but paper bags i used ice cream in a bowl off the ice cream yeah know. Yeah, yeah, a dandelion and burdock in a oh. in a stone jar. Yeah. Your veg was wrapped in brown paper bags. Yeah. yeah. Or you had a special veg bag and it just all got piled in there with that. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of greaseproof yeah. paper for loaves, isn't it? But the problem was we used to burn everything in those days because we had coal fires. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, yes. It creates even but, more problems. Yeah. Rubbish. A poem by Graham Gillis. There's plastic and paper and cardboard, bubble wrap delivered to our home, and the underpaid wrappers at Amazon, inundators with styrofoam, cucumbers are dressed in condoms, peaches trapped in seek through caskets, all adding masses of tonnage to our groaning shopping baskets. Compost thrown away, alternate, finding the right solution incineration recycling or interment trying hard to cut down on pollution global warming according to donald is an anti-american myth the republicans all agree with him the get democrats thinks he's taking the pith there's a pink bin and a blue bin a green one and a purple one and they're full of tiki tacky and they all smell of doom Apologies to Malvina Reynolds and Tom Lehrer.